Hi, my name is Sean Bodley with IBM. I'm part of the Power Advanced Technical Skills Team, and I'm located out of Dallas, Texas. And I'm about to demonstrate the automated disaster recovery capabilities of PowerHA System Mirror for AIX Enterprise Edition, utilizing the Hitachi TrueCopy replication. But before I perform the demo, let me give you an overview of our environment. We have two sites configured with three nodes in the cluster. I have two at the primary site for local failover, one at the remote site. Now for this demo, I will not actually have the node locally, the secondary node locally active. So when I fail the primary node, Jessica, it will actually cause a site failover to occur. Uh, this exact environment was used during the writing of the PowerHA 7.1 Red Book. So this picture may look familiar if you've seen the, the Red Book material. We're using AIX61 TL6, PowerHA 61 SP3. Uh, PowerHA 61 SP3 is required. It's the version that added this support. And then the Hitachi version of the CCI can be seen here. We have two USPVs. You can see the microcode levels that we have configured along with the serial numbers of the two units. We do have three LUNs configured on each of the two uh, Hitachi storage subsystems. In our particular case, the HDISC numbers do match. It's not a requirement, but it is nice from a management perspective uh, to be able to maintain them later. Now let me give you an overview of our cluster configuration. We have a single uh, Hitachi replication definition called TrueLi that is synchronous, consisting of the device group HTC-DG01 that is actually configured into the Horcom comp file, existing of the three LUNs that I showed in the previous slide. We have a single resource group with Jessica being the primary. Uh, again, the second node, Bino, will not be active for this demonstration, and then the third node is remote. Uh, we do have a site relationship set up to prefer primary site. However, most true DR situations, you wouldn't utilize this option. Uh, we did it for other demonstration purposes, but it will not be part of this demo today. We're just going to show a single primary site failure and recovery over to the remote site. You can see that we also have two service IP addresses configured. Now, we're actually using what's called site-specific service IP addresses. When the resource group is up on the primary node in site, node Jessica, the service one address is going to be active. When it fails over to a remote site, the secondary IP address, service two, is going to be active. And that's actually more common with a true site setup where the remote site would be part of a separate subnet um, to have its own unique service IP address. We have a volume group called TrueSync VG and our replicated resource of TrueLi. And over here on the right-hand side, you can see the reference to the Red Book. Now I'm going to swap over to actually share my desktop. And actually, I'm about to show something that was previously recorded during the writing of the Red Book. It's just when I recorded it, I had no audio to go with it, so now... I'm uh, recording this as a demo. So this piece is already pre-recorded, and I'm going to talk to it as it plays. You can see I've got one window in the top left of Jessica. The other three windows are for the failover node, Maddie. On the top right-hand side, I'm just showing the overview of the cluster configuration, just like I showed in the presentation slide just a second ago. There's showing my, my volume group of TrueSync VG. And back over on Node Jessica, you can see that I truly have the Service 1 service IP address active. The volume group TrueSync VG is active. And that volume group has two file systems, Oreo FS, Major FS, and two logical volumes, one of those logical volumes being the JFS log. Now, you can also see that I have HDISC 38 configured on each system, but you can actually get the attributes of that disk and verify that it truly is a unique disk. It's not the same LUN being presented to both systems. That's to show me that uh, I really am using 
replication. I'm not sharing the same line. So on Node Maddie, you can see that I don't have any service IP address uh, listed as all. And then what I'm going to show on the top right-hand side is I'm just running this little script that every three seconds it gives me a CLRG info to show me the status of the resource group. You can see that it's active on Node Jessica and that Node Maddie is considered online secondary. That will be the failover node. And back on Jessica, in the background, I actually have a little script running. That's all it's doing is writing the date and time stamp along with the node name to the uh, write date dot text file. And that's essentially kind of like if I had my own little application server just to write something. So during the failover and recovery, when we come back up at the remote site, I can check that log file and make sure that the current date and time is on there. So you can see that I, I broke out of tailing that, that log file, and now I'm executing a reboot minus Q. And I prefer the reboot minus Q because it's the same as the halt minus Q, but I don't have to go back to the HMC and tell it to restart the node. So right now, you can see that nothing has changed. We have to wait for the failure detection rate of 30 seconds to kick in before the remote node will throw up the alert that says site down. So now on the bottom right-hand side, you can see at the tailing of the log that we hit the site down. The CLRG info is telling me that it's offline. And we can see on the bottom right-hand side that it's now acquiring the service IP address. Now remember, this is going to be service address 2 instead of 1. So if I look at NetStat over on the bottom left, you can see service 2 is now in place. On the bottom right, you can also see that we're now uh, running a reset on the LUNs so we can acquire the LUNs in full read-write mode. And then our cluster status on the top right is telling me we're still in the acquiring state. So on the bottom left, we'll check again, and now our volume group is actually active, and our file systems are mounted. And now that the file systems are mounted, uh, my, my status says that everything is online on Node Maddie and that Jessica is down. That's exactly what I expect to see. And now we'll go back over to Node Maddie and check the log file and make sure that we see the updates. So we can see here that it kept running for about 10 seconds after I broke out of tailing the log and actually executed the reboot. So everything is active and exactly what I would expect to see. So that shows me that my replication is completed. And with that, I'm going to end the demo. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at sbodily at us.ibm.com. Thank you.